guys welcome to the session by k21 academy in this session we are going to discuss about provisioning in abs cloud manager now let us take a quick glance at the agenda firstly we will be looking into provisioning in ebs so provisioning is the kind of installation in oracle cloud it can be done through ebs cloud manager or preloaded templates so generally preloaded templates is only used for demo instances which is not available for production kind of deployment so in this session we will be seeing more about ebs cloud manager we have two options where we can provision our instances directly which is one click provisioning and advanced provisioning so we have taken a clip from one of our step by step training program where we cover how to build manage and migrate e business suite r12 on oracle cloud in this session our expert will be talking about ebs cloud manager provisioning okay so we have got uh, provisioning via cloud manager and via preloaded templates okay the second one the preloaded templates is only you know used for uh, um, uh, your vision or say the demo instances okay not much uh, uh, not available for your production kind of deployment so this is basically the preloaded templates are there the virtual machines you can just take it from the marketplace and create it okay so we will focus on that at the later stage right now i am focusing on the cloud manager and we have got two options there one click and the advanced provisioning where we can provision our instances uh, directly now one click is basically going to be used for again for your demo purpose and all whichever version you want right now 12 to 9 is available okay in the one click provisioning so very very uh, straightforward okay takes no input at all if you are using the one click provisioning so let me come to the environments and if i say here you are seeing these two options so one click and the advance okay now if i go to the one click it just take one input and what is that input just the name okay so i say test e environment okay now here there is only one option okay vision demo install only one version is there and here 19 c database so this is like always oracle basically does it whenever there is a latest version released or say 19 c or anything for the vision install purpose they just give this instance which just take uh, 30 to 40 minutes to get that uh, things ready and it uses single virtual machine for deploying your application and the database everything will be deployed on that instance so this is a Thing like you know if you are going to see the new features which has been released okay so if you see that you you need to test certain new features which has been released maybe for the functional team or so you can quickly create the environment perform your demo and once it is done then you can burn off this environment means you can delete this environment so this is just the uh, you know sample environment a seeded environment which is available okay this is just one uh, single vm for your database and uh, and uh, application only one vm will be there right so once you say submit it so only one thing you just need to give the name of your environment and just say submit so it is going to be submitted here and that is where it is going to create your instance so advanced provisioning is the one where we have got more control more control of selecting the subnet more control uh, sorry more control of selecting the shape uh, the various other options we can go ahead and select it okay we want if we want to have a load balancer we can have the load balancer if we don't want the load balancer we can directly expose the application tier because it is a single node why to pay it for load balancer as well okay even though if it is a test environment or so in organization we are not using the load balancer okay so you you can directly expose your application node and open the ports on that and can directly access it like as if you are doing it on the on premise so for that you can go ahead and select the advanced provisioning okay and advanced provisioning will give you a better 
control on the environment. So I just go ahead and select the advanced. Now you can see here many things. Okay, six phases. Now this is in the 12.2 because they have included this extensibility option as well. Okay, otherwise a database tier, application tier, and directly review. These two are not there. And you can see here they have made because you know give given the more clarity on the inst on the UI as well. Now via advanced provisioning also you can go ahead and have the vision demo install or you can have the fresh install. You can have 1213 or 1229. Okay. Now this is only for the provisioning, but your cloud manager supports 1213, 11204 to 12 to 10 uh, 19C database. Okay, all the versions are supported. But when you are say provisioning, it is not giving you that uh, much, uh, you know, options available here. So now here is basically you can go with the new installation. Okay, so as of now, uh, we, we are going with the new installation. Here we need to give, uh, you know, some name, uh, say demo 004 something. Okay, that is my environment name. I'm going with 12 to 9 with the 19c database or here I can have a 12c database option as well. Okay. Once this is there, I will be moving to next. And next here, now you have got a database. Either you can use the compute database or you can have a virtual machine database or you can use the exadata database, whichever database you want. So if from here, we were talking about the topology where uh, you know the deployment options available for EBS uh, Oracle applications. So database you can have to be okay, can be on the compute on the virtual machine VMDB database. And in, if you are say going with the VMDB database, you, you can go ahead and have an option of rack to node rack. Okay. And if I go with an Exadata database, first I need to provision the Exadata hardware and then that will be listed here. And from there, I will be using that for deploying my database instance. That is how I am going to do it. So first you need to provision the Exadata database. It will take around five hours of time, five to six hours of time to provision the Exadata hardware in your tenancy. And once it is there, then you will be using that. It will be, you know, listed down in the Exadata DB in your tenancy, and you will be seeing that option. So this is for the VM DB database. You can select it, and here you can select the path set level. It gives you one path set level lower and the latest one. Both it gives. And now, if you see here, we have got good amount of shapes available. It can be more if you are in the paid environment. So this is going to be more. Right, so here let's give uh, the name as uh, uh, this thing say demo uh, 04, no, demo CDB something, container database. Then logical host name, I said demo um, INST. Okay, so still, if you remember it, the limitation is still there. The host name should be of 30 characters. On the traditional side as well, that limitation is there. If you're Host name dot domain name is more than 30 characters. Your concurrent managers doesn't work. Okay, uh, demo instance and here I said that say example dot com. That is what my and demo PDB. Okay, as it is 19C, the pluggable database name you need to give. Now here I'm going to select this E dot two or something. Yeah. Okay, transparent database data encryption. This is an optional thing. You can have it, but yes. It confirms that you are already having this the license of this security feature. Okay, so that is a by default statement they have mentioned that in the auditing, if it is found that you are using an TDE or so, then and if you it is not licensed, then you will be charged heavily. Right, admin password between nine to thirty characters you need to give it and. So fault domain either manual you can select the fault domain here. These options are there in advance. I think it is just going to give you the arm and channel count. Okay, which you can increase or decrease it depending upon what CPU how many CPUs like here I have used the two CPUs. So by default it has taken the 
four channels so two into like twice the number of cpus it uh, basically goes with right so here as we have seen the name as internal zone you can have it in these are like all our internal instances and then you can have see here the load balancer i can use an application tier node i can use an existing load balancer and can manually configure it later or i can use the new load balancer these are the three options which are there so depending upon like what topology you want you really want to have a load balancer or not you can select it from here and see all right this is like the speed you can have it okay uh, this is the protocol you can have it uh, like, let's give the host name as demo uh, 004 ap application and example.com okay so here this is my web entry point node and storage shared or non shared now shared and non shared will come in case if you have the multiple nodes and this is the place where you are going to add the node okay so here if i say my shared apple top that means i i it is going to use the shared apple top okay the shared file system and here i'm going to say logical host and the logical domain i'm going to give it Oh, sorry yeah this is about the storage it can be shared or non shared Sh non shared means each application will be the one which is going to have its own uh, file system and here is the place where i can add the node okay multiple node but first one this one will be the one the primary node where my web logic and all the ad web logic admin server will server will be running okay that is only the one node where application uh, ad uh, web logic admin will be running and all the other uh, things i can add the nodes and can add the services accordingly but right now if you remember there is a concept that each service will be deployed on each node and then later you can configure it like which service you want it on which node you can just start and stop now here you can see my it is giving my logical host name it is giving my logical fully qualified domain name what it will be okay so yeah and what will be there the storage if i want to increase the storage okay or if i suppose want to add the node it is going to just add the nodes here now you can go to okay save zone okay and say next now let's see what is here so provisioning plan you can give the activity details here okay perform the general valid validations yeah but these are all the activity plan details but yes if in case i want something else to be run on that validation or so i can mention it here but yeah i am not sure about it the activity plans that what it is because this usually it does it while doing the provisioning okay i know that because these were the activities uh, which it does during the provisioning side so these are like all the seeded one it checks all the patches and everything compile it all these are the activities meant for the provisioning okay but i can basically give some activity here no custom task here but yes i can create it from my uh, list or so but as of now let's not worry about it move to the another one so now here i can give my own key i can add it for the users which this feature was not there earlier okay so i can add ssh key for the users okay otherwise by default your keys will be generated and cloud manager is basically taking care of that from its own so here i have an option that i can upload my key as well which will be used for provisioning right so this is finally our entire summary what all is there the following ss key will be uploaded none none okay so none of the key will be generated i just want to give a try uh, you know to this instance because i haven't checked that this is the latest one that if i am not putting any key is it going to generate it in the same way as the you know by by a cloud manager or so that is what i want to check so here you can see all the logs this pre-validation is going on right now not yet generated 
you can put the display maybe in some time it is going to uh, display that we have put down everything about the certification including the basic concepts that one should be knowing you will be introduced with ebs on oci deployment architecture oci concepts for application dba networking for cloud application dbas ebs cloud manager and provisioning managing ebs cloud manager and cloning migration ebs high availability and disaster recovery on oci in this 8 week roadmap we take you from basics to advanced level along with the tips and resources for clearing the certification exam once you are done with the certification then you can start preparing for your cv and start applying for jobs we also have a separate team working for cv preparation and on job support so if you want to build manage and migrate e business suit r12 on oracle cloud and want to learn right from basics to expert level then we have a comprehensive step by step training for you that includes hands on labs including exam preparation and the most important part one year on job support if you are interested in this program then i would highly recommend you to attend our free class which covers future of ebs why to learn ebs on cloud ebs cloud manager overview and many other topics If you are interested in this free class you can visit k21academy.com/ebscloud02 you can also find the link in the description